You what's your take on the idea that Zoomers are protesting Zionism because they're not sex havers? Final. Why does Scott? Uh, why does Scott Galloway think about eighteen-year-olds fucking so much? That's weird. I think there's something bigger going on, Michael. I think that the you have young people who are enraged by the lack of opportunity that they're presented with. I think that protesting is kind of the new, if you will, sex. Young people aren't having as much sex. I know how ridiculous that sounds. But He's like, yeah, they won't fuck me. Um, it's really weird. Back in the day, I used to clean up with the TAs and the research assistants. Nowadays, they won't fucking suck me. Uh, and it's really messed up. I'm the real victim, as always. Let me tell you guys, I, Scott Galloway, am the real victim. He's like, the young people aren't having sex as much. I can attest to that personally. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at the hosts. I didn't even notice. Look at the CNN. Look at the CNN commentator's face when he says that. Wait, what? Something bigger going on, Michael. I think that the, you have young people who are enraged by the lack of opportunity that they're presented with. I think. Okay, never mind. His his face is just kind of like that. It seems testing is kind of the new, if you will, sex. Young people aren't having as much sex. I know how ridiculous that sounds, but for the species to survive. Oh my God! No, that's just his resting face. Oh my God! He has resting psycho killer face. What the hell is going on? He's literally like this. Remember when you guys remember when you guys asked me to smile more and I was like doing the What's up? Let's talk about ethnic cleansing today. That's him. He's got the Kubrick stare version of that, which is That's Michael Smirkonish. I listen to him a lot. He brings up the lack of sex thing a little bit too much. You have to have young people connecting um uh in terms of romantic opportunities and also for the species to survive, you get a dope a hit from gathering together and fighting off a perceived enemy. And I think they're erring on the ladder, if you will. I think they're on the hunt for what I'd call a fake mortal enemy. And the reality is if you type in to Google anti-Semitism and pick any century in the last 3000 years, you're gonna find multiple instances where the world uh, decides the Jews are the mortal enemy. And then finally, you have made up your mind that all of these people, whether, by the way, this is the thing I never understand. I can't tell if someone who is dick riding Israel legitimate, legitimately believes in their heart of hearts that this is pure anti-Semitism and nothing else. I cannot tell if they are cynically saying this. Like Jonathan Greenblatt, I think is cynically saying it, right? The Apartheid Defense League, I think he's a piece of shit. I think he's cynically saying it. Sometimes, a lot of Christian Zionists cynically saying it. There are, I think, some that like legitimately think saying Israel is fucked up and an apartheid state is is like anti-Semitic. Like the person that's talking to you is actually not operating on like the boundaries of consciousness and and being like a good person and thinking, hey, maybe you shouldn't murder fucking 15,000 children. You know what I mean? Like, and I can never tell if someone is like legitimately, genuinely that hysterical, if they are just cynically saying it. Now, Scott Galloway, probably cynical, right? Like part cynical, part hysterical. I don't know. It, it just weirds me the fuck out. Opportunists always try to fucking take advantage. The problem is the pro-Israel brigade literally is giving massive dubs to the fucking fascists. It makes me so mad. Anyway. And I know this sounds paranoid, but it doesn't mean, mean I'm wrong. The frame through which they view the world is oftentimes or predominantly TikTok. And on TikTok, Michael, there are 52 pro Hamas videos for every one pro Israel video. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. For sure. So the frame through which they see the world is, um, in my opinion, being influenced to sow division and chaos uh, within America and divide young from old. Yeah, he's saying they they are Part trying to do chaos and divide America young from old so the youngs won't fuck me, an old guy, okay? NYU professor says Hamas-loving students need to have more young sex. aren't having enough sex, and so they go on the hunt for fake threats. And the, the most popular threat throughout history, type into Google anti-Semitism and pick your century, and you're going to find it. No. The, a, a, a Jewish girl on her way to get a manicure is not your mortal enemy. Stop it, for God's sake. <laughs> 
Wow, what a line, dude. What a bar. Yeah, no shit, dumb fuck. Let me ascribe a position to my interlocutors that they do not have so that this is more beneficial for me. Let me dunk on a straw position that I totally made up and then yell about that. Is there a single fucking person that will do a decent enough job defending the Palestinian side here? Or is it just going to be Don Lamont? That's another thing that I have noticed a lot, as a matter of fact. I have noticed something that I find very interesting. I think that the way that uh, the Israel defense and State Department propaganda works, definitely being realigned on the same boundaries of white supremacy. Not that, like, obviously, like, Israel isn't uh, a white country by American standards, right? But I do think that a lot of this, uh, a lot of this stuff revolves on the same, like, is, is basically on the same exact boundaries, same exact political and social boundaries of white supremacy. So you do see many pro-Israel uh, supporters and and those who are in, uh, unconditionally in, uh, in support of Israel saying stuff like I hate Black Lives Matter and this is what I hate even more right and and I think that another consequence of that is is that there is negative polarization from black and brown people that are like yeah I know what this is I know what's going on like you rarely if you see someone who is black or brown and they are defending Israel oftentimes they're paid for it even if you see uh, black people who are conservative otherwise, like that girl Esther on the panel that I was on, she was literally fucking pro-Palestine. Dude, who is buying these tents? The enormous modular LED screen is organic though, yeah. I mean, they raised like 60 grand or something, or like 90 grand in like a matter of 24 hours on GoFundMe to fucking prop this shit up. And they brought Jonathan Greenblatt uh, over. The Zionist counter-protesters are very organized. They have a shit ton of money. They have a shit ton of... of uh, experience propping up counter protests like this like they're always going to be ready for the moment uh, my twitter replies are absolutely insane right now i don't know how you deal with this regularly i'm brain broken uh and i don't care also i deleted twitter from my phone so i never see it and also i understand that there is true hatred and anger in the hearts of those uh, go out of their way to defend the unconscionable actions of the Israeli apartheid regime that is currently doing a genocide. So I know that it's like, it's not their ideology that is motivating them to say things like this. It is actually the deep, the deep pain that they have in their hearts. The, the, like they are spiritually unwell. Those who defend Israel are actually spiritually ill. They are not happy people. They cannot be. You have so much fucking hatred in your heart. It just doesn't, there's no way. White House on campus protests over Gaza war up to colleges and universities to decide on police presence. Nice, dude. You're not going to say that it's fucked up to sick the rabid dogs of the state on student protesters. That's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, Scott Galloway has some really interesting opinions. It's because students aren't fucking. That's why they're like really angry at the genocidal state of Israel. Yeah, that's what it is. That must be what it is. To your point before, it has become, it's become the thing to do. It's a fad. Some of the, some of the kids are out there and they don't know what they're protesting about. It's oh, thanks, Don Lamont. Shut the fuck up. What do you know? You don't know anything. You don't know anything. The fuck do you know? All you know is, is being a fucking careerist, okay? Ah, oh, these kids don't know what they're protesting. It is pretty fucking black and white morally, okay? This is an issue that is not complex. You have a conscience. Everyone does, right? Everyone does. And inside of you, there's a little voice that says, what if Israel is in the wrong? Oh my God, I don't want to think about that. Lean into the side of you. Lean into the, the emotions that you feel when you see the harrowing pictures from Gaza. It is not a complex issue, and it wasn't a complex issue before October 7, and it's not a complex issue after October 7. It has never been complex. It's actually a pretty, pretty black and white, morally pretty black and white issue. And anyone who tries to say it's complex is only doing so. It literally doesn't fit in their own mental framework. So I try to see the silver lining there. I try to see a positive in that. And I, I think that whenever people go, oh, it's a complex issue, I try to urge them to lean into why they think it's complex because it's not actually complex at all. If roles were reversed, you would not have no, no issues with it at all. You would know exactly what it is.